All right, so in this lesson, we will be solving linear equations using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and then applying that to real life problems. So just as a review, an equation is a statement that two expressions are equal. A linear equation in one variable is an equation that can be written in the form of ax plus b equals zero, where a and b are constants, and a does not equal zero. A solution of that equation is a value that makes the equation true. Inverse operations are two operations that undo each other or cancel each other, such as addition and subtraction, multiplication and division, uh, radicals and exponents. When you perform the same inverse operation on each side of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation, and, a, and in an equivalent equation, um, the same solutions occur. So anyway, I'm going to breeze over this addition and subtraction properties of equality. Basically, these just say if you add the same value on both sides, you get an equivalent equation and the values will be the same. So for our first two examples, uh, we have x minus 3 equals negative 5. So we want, want to see what's happening to our x. We want to isolate our x. And we're going to do that by undoing any operations that are happening to our x in the reverse order of operations. So in this case, I have x minus 3 right here. So to cancel out minus 3, I'm going to plus 3. But remember, if I add 3 on the left side, I have to add 3 on the right side to keep this equation true. So this is going to become x equals, and then the negative 3 plus 3 would cancel, and the negative 5 plus 3 becomes negative 2. And now that I have x alone, this is my answer. I want you to box your answers, okay? And then to check that, you can plug this back in, this negative 2 back in for x. So I get negative 2 minus 3 equals 5, and that is true, so I know that my answer is correct. For part b, I have 0 0.9 equals y plus 2.8. So once again, I want to see what's happening to my variable y. In this case, y, we are adding 2.8 to y, so I'm going to subtract 2.8 or add negative 2.8, same exact thing on both sides. Now these 2.8s are going to cancel, so I just have y. And then over here, I just need to do 0 0.9 minus 2.8, and that's going to be a negative number, and then 2.8 minus 0 0.9 is 1.9. And this is my final answer. Once again, I can check by plugging this back in. Does negative 1.9 plus 2.8 equal 0 0.9? Yes, it does. So I know my answer is correct. The same uh, principles for multiplication and division are true, that the ones that were the same for addition and subtraction. Uh, if you multiply the same thing on both sides of an equation, you produce an equivalent equation. And same thing with division. If you divide the same thing on both sides, you produce an equivalent equation. All right, so for these equations, we'll start with equation A. I have negative n over 5 equals negative 3. And we want to look at what's happening to my variable. Well, there's a negative sign, and I'm dividing it by 5. So I can cancel this all out in one step. I'm going to multiply, because that's the inverse operation, and then by negative 5, the negative will cancel out the negative, and then multiplying the 5 will cancel out the division by 5. But remember, if I multiply the whole left side by negative 5, I have to do the same thing to the right side. And this is how I want you to uh, write your multiplication. Um, with the parentheses here. So anyway, I have negative 3 times negative 5, which is positive 15. And then these cancel out right here. So I just get n equals positive 15. Box my answer. And then I can check. Does 15 over 5 with a negative sign equal negative 3? Yes, it does. Great. All right. So for the next example, I have pi x equals negative 2 pi. So I want to see what's happening to my x. And just in from now on, you think of pi as pi. Don't think of it as 3.14. Don't think of it as anything else. Leave it as pi unless you're specifically uh, instructed to not use it as pi. Anyway, pi is being multiplied by x. So to cancel out multiplication, I can either multiply by the reciprocal or divide. They're the same exact thing. So I'm going to divide both sides by pi. And there is a negative here. Uh, the pi's will cancel out on both sides. You don't have to draw these strike through. I'm actually going to not draw them because I don't like them, but you can do that if you like. But anyway, I just get x equals negative 2 because the pi's cancel out. And if you plug that back in, if I plug negative 2 in for x, does pi times negative 2 equal negative 2 times pi? Absolutely. So now we're done. All right, so for the last equation for example 2, we have 1.3z equals 5.2. Same thing, I want to see what's happening to my variable. It's being multiplied by 1.3. I'm going to cancel that out with division. But if I divide 1.3 on the left, I have to do the same thing on the right. Uh, and now I'm dividing with decimals. 
and I never want that. So I can easily just move the decimal on the top and bottom to create uh, 52 over 13. Uh, that's the same thing as multiplying by 10 on the top and bottom. And 52 divided by 13 is just 4. So I get z is equal to 4. Can plug that back in. 1.3 times 4 does equal 5.2. So now I'm done. So that does it. Whoops. Here we go. That does it for example 2. For this example, in the 2012 Olympics, Usain Bolt won the 200-meter dash with a time of 19.32 seconds. Write and solve an equation to find his average speed to the nearest hundredth of a meter per second. So, if you remember the formula, distance equals rate times time, that's going to really help you here. Well, let's see how far his distance was. Well, his distance was 200 meters. So, I know I can plug in 200 for D, so 200 equals, well, I'm looking for my rate in meters per second, so we keep that the same. And then my time is 19.32. So I'll plug that in, in parentheses. And then I found that right here, 19.32. So in this case, I have R times 19.32. But to solve for R, to cancel out multiplication, I'm going to divide by 19.32 on both sides. Okay. Now, you could do this out, but that might take a while. So I'm going to use a calculator. So I'm going to do 200 divided by 19.32, and I get 10.35, and we want our answer to the nearest hundredth. If we go to the thousandth, that's a one, so we're gonna round down to 10.35. So back over here, I'm gonna write R is about 10.35 meters per second. Okay, and for a word problem, I like to have a word answer. So I can write Usain Bolt's average speed was about 10.35 meters per second. And now we're done with this one. On January 22nd, 1943, the temperature in Spearfish, South Dakota fell from 54 degrees Fahrenheit at 9 a.m. to negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit at 9.27 a.m. How many degrees did the temperature fall? So I know my final temperature is negative 4 degrees, and if I add the amount of temperature, the, the number of degrees that I, that it, the temperature fell, um, I will get back to my original uh, temperature, which is 54. So I'm going to call this x. So if I add negative 4 plus x, I know that's going to give me 54 degrees. Okay. Well, now I have negative 4 plus x, so to solve for x here, I just want to cancel out this negative 4. To cancel out a negative 4 or a minus 4, all I have to do is add 4 but I need to do that on both sides to keep the equation true. So I get x equals 58 degrees. So once again, this is a word problem. So I'm going to say the temp fell 58 degrees from 9 a.m. to 9, 27 a.m. And now we are done. Sorry for the mess. My handwriting is not the best, but we got the answer.